Domain 9 is here. Hello guys, for this video we will be covering everything you need to know for Domain 9 exploration. First things first, the number one thing that you need to do once you get there is to do the main quest, up until the part where we go inside a dream and recall everything that happened on our journey. After that we get the quest that requires us to activate a vermilion statue which we will talk about in a bit. Follow the quest line until we are tasked to activate an astral monument. After doing so, we can now go rogue and ignore the storyline to do exploration. Alright, now what are the three main things that we need to know first before exploring? At number one, we have the observatory, which after activated will reveal information on a certain part of the map. In order to activate it, we need to align it with the proper constellation. How exactly? Just keep shuffling the thing around until you get a reaction from the constellation. Once you do, wait until it registers and voila, a part of the map is now revealed. At number 2 we have Vermilion statues. They serve as the teleport points in Domain 9, and the important thing about these statues is the buffs that we get after upgrading them to certain levels. There are 5 statues in Ignisville and some of the exploration points are locked behind statue upgrades. So here are the things that you need to prioritize if you want to efficiently clear the map. So what is this material that's being used to upgrade vermilion statues and how can we farm them? They are called field energy and can actually be gathered through various means. Almost all of the exploration points will give us this material which we will tackle one by one after getting to know number 3. Astral Monuments Before exploring a certain part of the map always make sure to activate these things first because 1, they reveal concealed field energies. 2, it allows you to interact with the exploration points on the surrounding area. Meaning, you won't be able to activate some of the exploration points if you don't activate astral monuments. And 3, your buffs from the Vermilion statue are also ineffective unless you activate these things. I already have the required upgrade to open astral chests, however, as you can see the chest is still locked. If you activate the astral monument, the buff will take effect and I can now open normally. Now, without further ado, we can start taking a look at the different kinds of exploration points. Starting off with flowing springs which gives field energy once you hit them with the corresponding element. As of now, the only ones that I've seen are red ones so we use flame weapons to activate it. Apparently the springs along with the field energies scattered around the overworld recharges every week, so for the casuals out there, there's really no need to clear them all out in one sitting. You can go at your own pace and maybe try to ignore getting bombarded with the icons on the map. Next, we have the million chests which are the equivalent of supply pods. Some of them can be opened normally and some requires beating mobs first. There's even this one where you have to challenge two dudes to a spa. They are weak but have cool exit though. Then we have astral chests which I've shown earlier. To open this one we need to upgrade our wings vermilion statue to level 5. We also have burning feather chests that are supposed to be unlocked by upgrading extended net vermilion statue to level 3. However, there's a little trick that you can do to open this without upgrading the statue. You can do this by simply moving past the chest and hitting the open button at the very last minute. Aside from those three, we also have Tai Chi Chests Heaven and Earth, which are the equivalent of Password Chest Type 1 and 2. Tai Chi Earth, the blue one gives 30 field energy while Heaven, the purple, gives 50. Also, take note that we don't have multipliers for Domain 9 chests so try to open them when you see one. By beating the new world boss Xuyang, we can also open the Tai Chi Yin Yang chest, but first we need to be at world level 95. Take a look at the loot here to see if you would be willing to jump to the hardest world level for these rewards.
This reminds me to tell you guys that from now on you should take signet chips from the selector box we get from weeklies, and also to take the daily quests from domain 9 as much as possible. Next on the list is Field Energy Hunt. This one is pretty simple, you just have to hit the ball until it goes back to its place. While most of them are easy, some of them gives you a hard time by zooming around the place so do take a closer look where they fly off to, or else you'll end up searching the wrong places. Sixth one is Pathway Reconstructor. Another quite simple mechanism where we have to fix three circles to the proper position. Arrange all circlets so that the part of them where there's a cavity will face the same way as the blue dot. The titles are pretty self-explanatory, sky means the top one, center is the middle, and earth is the bottom part. Do be cautious of misclicking though as some of these things move so slow that having to do another rotation will bore you to death. After that is Geomantic Compass. Yet again another simple apparatus that once activated will point you to the direction of where the hidden field energy is. Do take note that sometimes two of this device shares the same field energy so you have to activate them both within the time limit. Speaking of race against time, this next exploration point does the exact thing where you have to deliver an energy wave from one device to another within a set period of time. Ninth on the list is Departure Calibration. A pretty fancy name for a very simple gadget. What you have to do is aim the green device at the purple totem. You can do this by standing at the exact opposite side of the target and hitting the gadget with a weapon of your choice. Then we have Sequential Mystery. Follow the pattern and get the reward when you get it right. Failing doesn't do a thing so you can try as many times as it takes. Not much of a mystery huh? Maybe this next one will make up for that lack of mysteriousness. Hidden Maple Path. Ring the bell and a secret path shall reveal itself to you. Follow it and you might get some field energies. Finally, we have the transportation devices. First one is Vermilion Wing which can be used once you upgrade a certain Vermilion statue to a certain level. Pretty cool when in use, but not until you find out that you won't be the one controlling the flight, and that you can't choose your destination either. My honest thoughts. Completely useless. Never make the mistake of prioritizing statue upgrade for this one. Second one is the Dragonfly Cruiser. This is similar to the taxi on Mororia and does have its uses. Ride one if you want to chill and enjoy the view. Last, but not least is the Speedwalker Relic, which allows us to walk on walls. Actually I haven't used this one except when taking this clip because I have Rubilia, but I'm pretty sure this would be very helpful for exploration. Yep. Oh, and also just a heads up that there's a part of the map that's still off limits. No matter what you try you won't be able to cross to the next island so this is probably for the next patch. Hey there everyone. If you do like my guides and other contents that I've been pushing out so far, please do consider becoming my supporter by using my Nova ID for Project Nova. This would really help me out and motivate me to make more quality contents for the game. Thank you very much and see you on the next guide.